is the revelation of God in man. That's what this revelation is all about. It is not about Jesus coming back down here and putting his foot in somebody's behind. <laughs> would love for Jesus to do. However, there is a power coming. Don't make light of, of, of the spiritual fact that there is, most definitely is spiritual armies you know, that, that are going to do something about this dumb stuff down here. So, okay, that's, that's real. But the Christian preacher has given to our people the hopeful intent that Jesus somehow is going to come and solve all of our problems where all the tears will be wiped from all of our eyes and we will be happy down here. And heaven will come out of this, you know, all of this stuff from outside of man has been the articulation of the Negro Christian ministry. Well, what this book says is that take all of this information and internalize it. Your Christ is within you. Your God is within you. Your heaven is within you. That's what the book of Revelation is about. And the various stages of your spiritual development as you become, amen, the hidden God. That's what this book is about. The revelation of the hidden God within yourself. It is seeped in symbology. It is so symbologically wrapped up in its code that the Negro Christian minister has frighteningly stayed away from it, not out of reverence, but out of ignorance. As he professed, I remember a young brother named, uh, no, I won't call his name out, uh, excellent brother, I mean, good brother, high spirit, held hell of the Bible in, in the uh, Bible study one Wednesday. He said, I believe every word in this book. And I know, you know, without even asking him, that, that he couldn't even pronounce every word in this book. <laughs> you know, let, let alone know what every word meant. You know? And he's very resistant to a deeper level of knowledge about the scriptures. You know? Essentially because he was raised a fundamentalist. His father was a preacher was a fundamentalist preacher. His teacher was a fundamentalist. He became a fundamentalist. So everything became exterior until the Spirit opened something for him. Now he stood up in his pulpit one uh, day during prayer service and uh, the Spirit moved him and he grabbed his robe and he was going like this. Mm -hmm. Mm. That's as close as he could come to articulating the sound of OM in his consciousness. Okay. It was OM that he had heard. But he had no academic information about the, the Word of God. But he had it. <laughs> you know? So I, I, I'm pointing out is to say that those who, who are believers, who trust in the Lord, who have faith in God, can gain the Holy Spirit and can get raised up, get their robe and go on to the next plane, to heaven, to, 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 which is just one elevator shot up. And they go to heaven you know, and, and stay up there a little while and, and they got to come right back down here. You, know, you, you can't unfold up there to God here. Those are children that are going up there ignorant. And, and they'll be back down here. In another woman's womb, crying mama, you know, looking for the light all over again. You know, you know it, 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 that's the cycle of birth and death. And a part of it is due to the problem of miseducation. What, as wonderful as Carter G. Woodson's book is about miseducation, he does not deal with the religious miseducation of the Negro. The, the most essential level 
of our makeup, of our nature. We are spiritually miseducated. And it's telling on us. We are behind our schedule. That is one of the reasons why every time you have an experience, a, a, a rush of anxiousness takes you over. You want some more. You want some, you know, we're behind. You know, we're trailing behind our own clock of destiny. And some didn't get here. They went dead. They're going dead as we sit here. Because the avenues, the places where spiritual knowledge should be accessible, it is not. Okay, well, let me let me get on because that's a, that's all another level of uh, reviewing and, and looking at things. But the, the 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 importance of revelation is not John's revelation, is not the revelation of Jesus Christ. It is your revelation. The Spirit has a revelation for each one of us, and the doorway to that revelation is not melanin; it is meditation. <laughs> melanin is wonderful. But the key is to get still and get in to yourself with the expectancy of having your divinity revealed to you by your God within yourself. But that's the real work, the real revolution, the real Armageddon, the real Jihad is <laughs> the war within. And you are designed to win it. Another important psychological factor that has not been thoroughly promoted among the African in this country. You are designed to win, to rule, and to master. That's your nature. It's no phenomenon if a black man steps out and says he's God. He simply has done what he's supposed to do. So when Father Divine announced it, he, he scared a lot of Negro preachers. You know, they threw him out of the church one one, one day. Yeah, but, but he he was giant. Divine had, had, had raised up to G.O.D. He was there, but he had a mission. And unfortunately, it did not include writing. He did not provide a list. Some say that he, he taught a group of black men. It may have included Drew Ali, it may have included uh, 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 Prophet Jones and Sugar Daddy Grace and uh, a couple of others who, who founded some offshoots of fundamental Christianity and bordering nearly on the uh, cult level. Uh, Prophet Jones had a, a problem with, with his hips. He, he was, had sugar in his shoes. And, uh, couldn't go over the full distance, you know. Uh, Sweet Daddy Grace seems to have been really highly raised and moral, but the, the other problem, again, of the teacher or the student, what caliber of student does the teacher have? If they are illiterate, how much can you teach the illiterate? That, that, that's what confronted Noble Drawley. And I'm sure uh, Benjamin Banneker had that problem as well. So he got the cream of the crop of the educated level of, of Africans at that time. He was able to educate uh, quite a number of, of black folks in terms of, of the re-entrance into the mysteries of the African, into the mysteries of the hidden God. So. Uh, Again, the, 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 the point of focus uh, is this one brother here, that he and I talk, and he said, well, if it ain't for, if I didn't get nothing else out of here, I got the message that, that we are God. Well, if I don't do nothing else but convey that one, let that be conveyed. <laughs> okay, because that's the center. If you've got that set in your consciousness, your world will begin to verify it. Things, people, books, literatures, and lectures will keep happening and coming your way to verify the fact that you're on target. Okay. That that's important because there will be those that, that will draw you back outside. You know, be coming with the satchels. Go with with this. 
you know, some of the you know, they'll be there, you know, and they, they don't challenge it, you know. Yes, but it says right here, you know, John chapter 10, verse 31 to 36. Throw that on them, they got to deal with it. You know, that, 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 that's the evidence, you know. And the other thing, of course, don't, don't even follow arguing with them. <clears throat> okay. Uh, so we dealt with Patmos the last time. Okay. Uh, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day, and I heard behind me a loud voice, like the sound of a trumpet. The, the, there are seven trumpets sounding off in Revelation. The sound of the trumpet is a particular spiritual frequency of the Word of God that may vary with those words that we've already dealt with. We're going to review these today. There are seven octaves spirituality in the level of consciousness of sound that open your chakra. Each chakra has a spiritual octave, a particular musical sound where it reads of peals of thunder. That would be the Tao, the Tao sounds like what the physicists have located to be the Big Bang Theory, like an explosion. I've heard it inside. And it sounds like an explosion, and it looks like an explosion. Then the harmonics begin, the music of the chakras. The real music is within you, is in your spiritual nature. Those are the sounds the information on listed under those trumpets are in reference to each chakra. Okay. Turn to Revelations chapter 2, verse 8. Anybody got, got the Bible here? All these American Negroes, they don't buy <laughs> It's a good thing the Bible can't save us, so we'd be lost right now. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, write down Revelations 2, chapter 2, verse 8. And to the angel of the church in Smyrna, write. Oh, let me do this before you get into it. This is uh, Charles Fillmore's Metaphysical Dictionary, and it's one of the few dictionaries that offer any information on the esoterics of the name in the scripture. Uh, Gaskell's book is probably in advance of this, but it may be out of print. Uh, the Dictionary of Philosophy and Religion by G.A. Gaskell. This is one that's available in. Uh, Fillmore was a metaphysician, and briefly, the metaphysical school is concerned with the mental being. They develop the mental plane to its highest level. They are not into supreme consciousness. They're into the light, and into, literally, the mind of putting on the mind of Christ, or Cres, in the ancient language, the mind of God. They are the doctors on this planet. <clears throat> the, the metaphysical level is where one becomes what a real metaphysician or metaphysician is supposed to be. I won't get into all of the, the technological level of it, because there's a whole level of technology on that mental plane. And some of you are, are supposed to be on that plane. Uh, unbeknownst to you, 
that some of you are metaphysicians, which is above that of the physician. Okay. Smyrna is a Greek word. Myrrh, flowing, distilling, sweet, fragrant, aromatic, spirituous, gall, sorrow, lamentation. That's the direct literary translation of Smyrna. The metaphysical meaning of Smyrna is substance. But thou art rich is what he quotes here as the substance. A substance center in the body located at the pit of the stomach. They that say that they are Jews and are not. This is what a Jew is. There are 12 spiritual centers in your body that shine like jewels. They are real jewels. <laughs> we are just playing with the result, the artifact, because the ones we have have no power working through them. These in your body do. But those who say that they are Jews and are not but are of the synagogue of Satan, of the centers of death. <laughs> Those physiological organs, nerve centers, ganglionic centers in the body that have been damaged, that are deficient, that are secreting pollutants instead of healing chemicals. Those are the synagogues of death, deceit a pretense that they're keeping you healthy and they're not. <laughs> that they're raising up your consciousness and they're not. That they're balancing your body fluids and they're not. And that doesn't mean there ain't no devil out there because he sure is out there. Yeah. But he doesn't have power over you if you don't give him power over you. The problem is the black ministry and the white ministry has given the devil power over the Christian to keep the Christian coming back to church. And one minister said, if there wasn't no devil, there wouldn't be nobody in church on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Folks get up and go, most folks get up and go to church out of shame, embarrassment, and fear, regret, and remorse. Not out of love. Until they find love in their own heart. So, so we, we, we're understanding the spirituality of what we're talking about is being inside. Let me finish reading this and I'll get back to the, 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 the point of that statement in uh, Revelations. The ninth verse, after he says, uh, they that say they are Jews and they are not. The ninth verse are false thoughts. The ten days of tribulation, ten verses, 10th verse, the 10 days of, of tribulation, the 10th verse, refers to degrees or steps in the perfecting of the individual. Refers to degrees or steps in the perfecting of the individual. There is a period of development where you will suffer. <laughs> there is a period of development where you actually must die physically to go, to be moved to a spiritual plane or spiritual life. But it's simply the real you leaving your spiritual house, your physical body. That, that's all it is. But we have the belief in death that we are going to die because we keep seeing we in the mirror. <laughs> okay, That ain't we. <laughs> that's the body. And there's a difference in consciousness when you come to this realization that you're in your body. I was walking up the street one afternoon and stopped in front of a, uh, the arcade and I remembered I was supposed to get something. And I turned around, but I, it, my body was facing that way and, and I had turned that way. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and I, just spirit letting me know something, that you're in the body. That, that's the whole idea of the, the statement, be in the world, but not of it. Mm -hmm. If you're attached to your base chemistry, then you're enslaved 
for your physical body. Mm -hmm. It is your master. You have to feed and service it. But when you become detached, then you master your physical body. At that point, you have the power of your own soul and access to the spiritual faculties of your body to use in your world to change it, to transform it, to command it, and to rule over it as G-O-D. That's what we're supposed to do down here. Okay. Okay, what I want to get back to here. I meant to read this. I think I did read it last Saturday. I want to go over because it's it's important. Okay, um, Revelation chapter five, verse one. Revelation chapter five, verse uh, chapter five, verse one. And I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a book written inside and on the back, sealed up with seven seals. Where's my chart up? I got it here this time. I didn't have it last week. So that we know what we're talking about when we talk about the seven seals by that statement and also the other one. Tape back there? Huh? Yeah. Okay. Need a little piece of tape. Maybe not when you see this might work. Yeah, okay. This I, I got I got a piece. This might work. And I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a book written inside and on the back sealed up with seven seals. Your back. Okay. Book means body. That's its metaphysical meaning. Book means body. There's another verse in here. I don't want to run through here. I should, I've got it written down here somewhere. In reference to the little book that is shown to John by the angel. And the, the angel tells him to put it in his mouth and eat it. And it became sweet in his mouth and bitter in his stomach. Th that's the whole book of Revelation. It is to take it inside. It's about the inner man and the inner earth rather than the exterior. But we understand according to the law of correspondence, as within, so without. As above, so below. That, that, that's the law. Whatever is going on within us is going on in heaven. What is going on in heaven is going on within us. We understand that heaven is for us our mind. And the earth for us is our body. The, the new heaven and the new earth that John sees is a new mind, the mind of God. A new earth is a spiritual body, the body of Christ. So the, we, we know that we're talking about the inner man, the inner being, and inner nature. Okay. As long as you, you keep that point, you... You can't get drawn out by somebody trying to interpret all of the cyclical events 
that transpire and look like something in Revelation. Every time an earthquake happens, you know, some preacher gets up and says, <laughs> and now the end has come. And he do three hours on the earthquake, you know, and then six months later, another earthquake, you know. So that we are not left ignorant because ignorance feeds fear. Ignorance feeds fear. And fear, of course, it is what kills us and somebody else. Very important to understand the significance of what keeps us off balance and keeps us limited. That to get fear out of consciousness is to leave room for one power that we keep seeing in our world that is missing. That's the power of love. What phenomena, tragic as it was, this little girl being shot by some Negro fools because they did not have enough consciousness to, to think or wonder if there were children in the house which may have held their trigger finger still just by thinking that well of black children. Perhaps they would have said, man, but don't shoot in there because there might be some kids in there. They didn't have that kind of consciousness about black children. That, that, that takes love to, to be able to think like that. Okay, let me jump right back over here to the message to Smyrna. And to the angel of the church in Smyrna write, the first and the last, who was dead and has come to life. If Christ is immortal, all-powerful, divine, and God, how can Christ die? The awareness of one's self as human is dead to the Christ consciousness. If one is not aware of God in him or her, they are dead to the divinity within themselves. The whole idea of Peter shaking Jesus in his boat is the idea of Peter waking Christ up in his boat, his vessel, his ship, his body. For him, his Christ was asleep in his body, in his consciousness. For John, his Christ was dead, if we want to use the analogy, as if we are unaware of that power, of that divinity, of that intelligence within ourselves. The spirit can't die. We become unaware. For, for us, it is dead. For us, it does not exist. That, that, that's the only clear interpretation of that. In reference to Jesus speaking here, it, it's not Jesus speaking here. It, it is the Christ the God within that is speaking. That, 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 that needs to be, to be known in order to separate the religious story from the spiritual message. We're talking about nature, the Christ within each one of us, God within each one of us. I know your tribulations, your poverty, and in parenthesis, he has, but you are rich. When you come to, to the realization of the jewels within your nature, of the gold and silver in your nature, of the power in your nature, then you are rich. <laughs> but on the exterior, we have the appearance of being poor. And as a people, we have been proceeding as if we are poor. We've been making the psychological assumption that we are poor, that we do not have, we can't afford, that we don't own, that we don't control. That, that's what we've been doing. The reason we know that because every time something happens, 
Because it's the white man. He got every damn thing. He got it. We give him credit for everything. We're giving him power. Giving him credibility that he doesn't even have. And you've got to give him integrity if you acknowledge what he's doing as being superior to what you are not doing. The realization brings about a clarity of how much power you really have. That's one of the greater benefits of self-realization, of self-revelation. You discover how much power you have and how much you can change your world rather than waiting for somebody else to change it. That's what most black folks are doing. Waiting on somebody to give them a job. We're waiting on next year's model of car to come out. We're extending the credibility and the power outside of ourselves. In your spirituality, you bring all of that within yourself. And, and, and that, that, that's work. You know? Because we've got all of these trip hammers back here that keep telling us just the opposite. Until we experience power, until we gain an inner experience of who and what we really are, then something clicks. And you know, you, know, you don't have to believe. You come to that point where you know God is within you. Power is within you. And then at some point, you know that you are God. You, 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 it'll scare you the first time <laughs> when you come to that realization. But as you grow into it, growing up, it becomes more real and more real. Okay. I know your tribulation and your poverty, but you are rich, and the blasphemy by those who say they are Jews and are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. Do not fear what you are about to suffer. Behold, the devil is about to cast some of you into prison, that you may be tested. Circumstances, limitations, those are part of your spiritual experiences. And they come in the most subtle of ways. You affirm, you meditate, you gain this sense of faith, this sense of love, you feel love in your being, and then somebody walks up on you. Hey, brother, can I get some good quality? Man, get that. You go off, you know. Where's your love? What happened to your love? <laughs> you know, what happened? Hey, well, where did God go suddenly? You, know, you get tested by people in your world. It didn't be the white boy from Buckhead. It would be somebody right there in the, in the bed, in the house, upstairs, downstairs, across the street, somebody you know, you like. So that you will know how much spirituality you have. Then, then the inner experience or where your, your spirit will hold you still and take everything from you. You won't be able to feel nothing. No joy, no peace, no you'll be a dead thing. <laughs> and all you do is pray your way through it. Won't even let you meditate. You get tested. Spirit reach in and grab your colon and yank it up. <laughs> yank it up. I'm just giving you some idea of what goes on because you're going to suffer. Because you're being changed. Transformed into another kind of being. And like the one writer said in this one book, it's just a strange experience to have your organs pulled all over the place and rearranged. It's another nature coming out of the same nature. But it's your higher self, quite different from what we seem to be now. One preacher in one of these little fundamentalist books had experience, but he'd reached this period where he was full of spiritual substance. The spirit was all through all of his organs. 
all covered him all over. And he spirit sent him out one night to go get something, you know. Late at night, troubled time, you know. And got down to this one street and the dude said, Halt. Turn around, take your wallet out your pocket. And if you move, I'm gonna shoot you. <laughs> and the guy threw up his hands and started doing his basic uh, brother of the Lord this and Lord that to do with BAM! Shot him. Well, it went right through. He's still standing. <laughs> filled up. You know, every cell, every organ filled up with power. He just blinked, you know. Oops, he was still standing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he couldn't have had that experience you know, it, without that kind of faith. Where you really, what I'm saying is what the, the spiritual knowledge is saying, what the spiritual path is saying, not me. You really can and are supposed to overcome death down here where you cannot be killed. Because that is the best experience they have. The best one is don't be there when they're doing the killing. <laughs> the, best, the best divine guides you can get. But to have a power over the things that harm is another level of spiritual power. Where, where the gun just won't work. <laughs> you know, or the, the dude forgets where he put his knife. And he can't find it. He can't find his, you know. <laughs> or he runs up on you and, and he forgets what he came up to do. <laughs> That's power. That's Godhood. Standing in, in the face of what appears to be danger. That, that, that's a real black woman and a real black man. That's master, able and noble. That, that's what we're trying to do. The chakras help get us there. Why they are so important. They help to get us there. Okay, let me, I want to read uh, something very important here because I want you to encourage you about your development and the kind of experiences that you're going to have did I leave that marker in here? We're dealing with the third chakra. Malapura, it's called. I want to read just this one little segment here. In terms of the, the purpose and function of the third chakra. In harmonious function. I'll read the... the the two, the three paragraphs. The harmoniously functioning and open third chakra creates a feeling of peace and inner harmony with yourself, life in general, and your place in life in particular. You can accept yourself completely and also respect the feelings and character traits of others. You possess a natural capacity to accept your feelings, your wishes, and what you experience in life, to see them in the right light and recognize them as a necessary part of your development. Thus, you can integrate your feelings, wishes, and experiences in such a way that they lead to wholeness. All your actions are automatically in harmony with the cosmic laws of natural balance that apply to the entire universe and all human beings. When your actions contribute to the development of spiritual and material riches in both yourself and your neighbors, you're contributing to overall evolution. You are full of light and energy, and the light within you also envelops your body. It protects you from negative vibrations and radiates into your environment. If your, if your inner eye chakra and your crown chakra are also open, along with the third chakra, your wishes are fulfilled spontaneously. I'll read that again. If your inner eye chakra and your crown chakra are also open, you recognize that all visible matter consists of varying light vibrations. Your wishes are fulfilled spontaneously because you are so closely connected to the energy of light in all things that you attract everything you are in search of. In other words, when these three chakras here, here, and here are open. 
anything you so desire, you can have. I'm talking about why you own the earth. We gotta get out of the way this learned thing that you earn your living by the sweat of your brow. That, that, that is what the spiritual path is saying. If there is an inheritance to be received. Now, Drew Ali told the earlier African Americans in the 20s that every black man and woman as Moors were to receive a million dollars in this country. And, and, and since then, you, you've seen a, a rash of growth of black men and women who've become millionaires. That, that was his prophecy to the Moors and the Moor Science Temple in the 20s. The level of mind that you develop allows you to contain that which is yours. If you have it on the mental plane, it must manifest on the physical plane. That's the law of the mind. The psychological assumption automatically provides the means to fulfill the dream desire. When the, these three major chakras are open, they work together to harmonize the energy of your consciousness so that you can mold a thing not only in the mental picture, but also in the energy form on the mental plane. <coughs> that is where you come about as close to mental magic as you get. So the, the chakras being open are very, very important. So that the power of the, again, the astral body, the etheric body, and the body of light can work through. We, we haven't gotten to the soul yet. But, but those are just all spiritual bodies, powers, that have charge over the earth. And that's as far as, it, as we've gotten in, in terms of what your spiritual potential really is. I just wanted to bring, bring that up. This is a, a fairly interesting book. The problem I'm having with this is that they're, they're being too uh, pictographic. They, 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 the chakras don't look like the, the, these, you know? And so if you go in with a preconceived idea of what the chakra's gonna look like, your subconscious will design you one. It can, it, it can do anything, you know? So if you go in with the idea of center, of spiritual center, let the center reveal itself, then you really know what yours look like, which may vary from someone else's, depending on each one of our stages of development. You know, they are that, that vastly different, but they will certainly differ in levels and, and types of energy that are being emanated through that particular chakra. So don't get caught up in the pictures. The information is good, you know, but what is better is the spiritual practice itself. Do not fear what you are about to suffer. Behold, the devil is about to cast some of you into prison that you may be tested, and you will have tribulation ten days. Be faithful until death, and I will give you the crown of life. The crown, spiritual crown, is, is multiple and varied in what that concept means, but the major meaning of this word There's authority. You can have power and no authority. But you can't have authority and no power. You got power now. But, but do you have authority? And if you do, over what? Your spiritual crown gives you authority with your power over the earth, which is your body. And then your bodies, as you go up higher, power over the physical body, then power over your astral body, then power over your etheric body, then power over your body of light, which, which is quite a, a, another level of the 
seven, talking about the seven rays, when you have the power over your your body of light, you can extend your ray of light all the way across the street. You can reach out and heal anybody with it when you have power and authority over your light. And that, that, that's what you are. G-O-D. And we're supposed to be able to demonstrate and express that in this life. Not, not when you die and go to heaven. Ain't nobody in heaven sick. Ain't nobody in heaven poor. You know, ain't nobody in heaven lonely. You know, <laughs> Leave that alone and, and get the things done down here. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches, which rings out several times throughout the Bible. Each one of your vertebrae, where the chakra is, is a church. Okay. The vertebrae, the seven major vertebrae of the line of your back are the churches. Inside of those vertebrae are nerve centers, on the physical level that act as activators for the spiritual center, the chakra. The chakra is not inside the bone on the physical plane, but where you will see it would be in that general area where that vertebrae is, but it's not inside the, the physical vertebrae. The nerve center is inside the vertebrae. The spirit, your spirit, will and does speak to each center through you. You began that in your meditative posture by mentally affirming for your chakra of the heart or solar plexus or third eye, the soma or the crown chakra, sahasara, to open. At some point, you will hear a tune. Your spirit doesn't speak English always. It speaks with music. And your center will just open. Or you hear a loud or subtle vibration around your crown center. But that's your spirit speaking. Or you'll hear one day a, a, a most remarkable sound in, in the, the black fabric of night. Ooh! 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 Awesome. The universe breathing. <laughs> it really shakes you up. <laughs> Very powerful. Very powerful. You'll hear it just one night. Or probably when, when, you, when you really want to go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> The spirit doesn't pay much attention to our schedule, no. but it's there, it's very real. The universe breathes, therefore we breathe. Breath is very, very, very important, very significant. The entire body breathes, in that it's not just the lungs, the entire body breathes, because it's not just moving air, it's moving energy, prana, life force. Okay. Okay, let's jump over to the third seal. We actually have already covered the part in it that's relevant. Uh, Revelation chapter 6, verse 5. And when he broke the third seal, I heard the third living creature saying, Come. And I looked, and behold, a black horse, and he who sat on it, had a pair of scales in his hand. Okay, the, the living creature, uh, the, the third living creature, I think that's Leo. Let's see what uh, happens. Maybe we'll deal with the four living creatures while I'm here.
there's mentioned four living creatures with eyes before and behind in the book of Revelation. One who has the face of a lion, one who has the face of a calf, I think it's T A R U T A U R first time. T A U? Yeah. T A U R U S. One who has the face of a man. And one who has the face of an eagle. The symbolism of four living creatures are not creatures, but certain particular powers in spiritual consciousness, pointing a direction of future, eyes before, and eyes behind, past. This is the heart chakra area, Leo, the heart. Taurus is the cerebellum or the sub subconscious brain mind. Taurus is in the brain stem and the back of the head. That's Taurus. Aquarius I think uh, Aquarius is a solar plexus. These, I think this, this whole area is where those four living creatures are first introduced as spiritual centers, focusing attention on those centers. <coughs> And I looked and behold, okay, uh, and he broke the third seal. I heard the third living creature saying, Come. And I looked and behold a black horse who sat on it and had a pair of scales. First of all, this idea here, whenever you see this idea in scriptures, it means power. Now it's interesting because the horse that is black is that of balance or harmony. Very interesting. In terms of the scales of what we most refer to here 
as the scales of justice. But what real justice is, is harmony. That's what real justice is. To be spiritually balanced. To be mentally balanced. To be physically balanced. Is to have harmony. Is to then to be moved or being moved with the universe. Is where we're trying to get to. To be moved by the level, the octave of rhythm that carries you harmoniously through your day around the problems being in the right place at the right time meeting the right people at the right time a balanced chemistry a balanced sense of self with no fear no doubt no neuroses no nervousness that's harmony that's balance. That's where power works at its best, when one is balanced, is in harmony with divine law. We just talked about the power that is provided when one finds harmony. As we talked about the third chakra, the penal gland being open, and the crown chakra being open, which provides this foundation of harmony, where then what you desire, you may have in a state of harmony, in a state of balance. Very interesting that a black horse would represent that instead of one of violence. The most violent of those four symbols is that of the pale horse, the, the one of death. Very interesting. I, I, I don't know if you can read any racism in there or not. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any questions about this particular little verse here? There isn't much Oh, yeah, well, there's, there's a bit more. Verse 6. And I heard, as it were, a voice in the center of the four living creatures, saying, A quart of wheat for Daenerys, three quarts of barley for Daenerys, and do not harm the oil and the wine. Wheat and barley would represent spiritual food or spiritual substance. There is a oil of life in your physical body that becomes transmuted in your spirituality. There is an oil in your physical body that becomes transmuted in your spiritual development. There is an oil in your spiritual body that heals in the process of being transmuted. Notice I'm not saying transformed, transmuted, where your chemistry is being changed, raised to a higher dimension of substance. The wine is the substance of exaltation, the substance of joy. It's in your crown chakra. When it opens, it flows down, and you get drunk, you get giddy, you get high. It heals while you're in that state. The Sufi practitioner wears a robe dipped in that oil. So when they start to, to lie or to make a mistake, they suddenly get drunk. And then their spirit, their higher spirit takes over so they don't make any mistakes. But these substances you have in your spiritual nature. As we, when we get to the crown chakra and the correct meditation, you should, some of you should experience the outflow 
of that substance on the crown chakra. So we'll see about that. Okay, what time is it? I might as well go Mickey Mouse watch. Okay, so yeah, good. Because we're going to review all of our spiritual practices, beginning with I am that I am. Yes, sir, you had your hand up there? Yeah, but I wanted to, uh, you know, you were talking about the uh, seven seals in the first uh, in the paragraph. What is the representation of the breaking of those seals? The representation is the opening of the chakra. To each individual. Each individual, yes. Uh, yeah, that, that's important to know you have your seven seals because you have seven chakras. You can get caught up in a lot of intellectualizing of exactly what every little symbol means. That isn't the spiritual purpose. That's academics. What I'm interested in you all doing is getting to the meditative position where you open your chakras. Okay? That's what makes study work. You know, your brothers can explain it from A to Z. But can they do it? Will they do it? That's where we need to be. Not just academic. We need to be doing, transforming and transmuting. Not just becoming the higher being, but changing, literally changing our nature, changing our consciousness, and changing our chemistry. So that, that's spiritual application. Real psychology. Okay. Let's put everything down. We're going to start with the techniques of spiritual practice. And the first one I introduced, if I recall correctly, is that of the name of Jehovah in English. At least that's what uh, the reading gets to be. Oh Lord, who's, who shall I say sent me? Is what Moses was supposed to have been asking. He said, the Spirit said to him, I am that I am. The I am affirmation is really a 